Okay, welcome back to my channel, The Night to Boast. So, let's continue with our playthrough with uh, with Velgar Velgard. Man, I already forgot the game's name. That is bad. Or at least bad at all. Anyway, the last time we, the last time uh, when we played, uh, we kind of saw Hardik. Unlocking magical powers. I found out. I found that interesting. So I'm going to speak with her and see where her. Interesting. Okay. Uh, to see where her quest finds will lead me. Uh, let's see what will. Power, I guess. I think that her storyline would be interesting to follow, though. There's like a potential there. I'm extremely intrigued by her connection and uh, the song related to the, to the stone. So let's see what will happen next. Toldar, it's a tunnel. Vedun Gar, Velos Atridum. But. Velos Atreidum is, is nothing like Isatuno. Isatuno, I remember. After you touched the dagger, the prayer, the proclamation, Isatuno. What exactly are you proclaiming? They don't remember. No one remembers. We don't even know what we lost. Uh, you lost me, Kanye. Harding? Are you in there? I'm sorry, what? What does Isatunol actually mean? Isatunol is an affirmation, a statement of existence, of... of being. It means, I am here. But no, not... not I. I is singular, but it isn't. We either. Hmm. We is multiple, but also separate. What? <sighs> Isatunol is the eternal hymn that encompasses all time. All spaces. I am, we are, this and that, here, there, now, and forever. <laughs> oh, this sounds like such a bad prayer for like uh, they, them pronounces and non binary stuff. But <laughs> I want to point out here that there is like an interesting notch of story here. Let's see what we find out about it. Okay, whatever works for you. Words aren't enough. It's, it's hard to put into words something you just feel. I'm certain Isatunal describes how we, the dwarves, once were. But none of the books say anything about it. None of the histories are right. If we forgot something so important, what else did we forget? I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't expect you to have an answer. Th thanks for letting me babble, by the way. Anytime. Oh, this That's last part what I'm wasn't for. necessary. <laughs> but she touched on something very interesting here as a story point. She mentions that what else could we forgotten besides the one that besides those things that uh, we currently found out about like the song of the stone and stuff like that this is like really really good a notch for a story because uh, it touches on uh, on things of the real world and now I'm not talking about <laughs> politicians <laughs> no, no I'm not talking about that um, I'm talking about we as species as humans you know um, there is like several theories online, and not only online, but also in uh, ruins and everything like that, that at one point the human race was quite advanced, but then something happened, and everything rolled back to the Stone Age. And that thing is like, like what she said, what, we, what else we forgot, is exactly the same thing with us. We are well, we humans tend to repeat our our 
our history quite often, over and over again. That includes our mistakes. And I kind of like that because it touches like the nature of something real that we are facing as um, as a race, as humans. So I like that, like like um, that uh, approach on the story. You upgrade, you upgrade your character, kind of take a workshop, you increase an item statistics. Finding another version of existing item or purchase it from a merchant will increase an item statistics for us unlocking new properties. I don't like that system. First three blood paths to bring out your equipment uh, your equipment's full potential. Okay. Collecting momentous out of the world will let you upgrade the caretaker workshop. You getting it will increase the number of enchantments on offer and increase the power level of all weapons you can find or purchase while adventuring. You upgrading it will increase the number of enchantments on offer. Why why is this word so so strange? Whatever. <laughs> okay, let's see. So those are our stuff. I think I will hold back on the on the. Uh, I'm sorry. I will hold back on the uh, upgrades for now. Let's see what we we'll get. Oh yeah, and there's like something here that we could read. Read. I guess this chest got lost in the faith and someone shepherded to our doorstep. Is it just me or does dark look somehow familiar like something an old friend would wear? Harding. Interesting. Okay. Oh wait, we don't need to talk with her, thank god. <laughs> Why? Let's let's explore this place. By the way, we didn't get the chance to do that. Usually, I'm quite the uh, the type who likes to explore <laughs> the map and everything else. So let's see what uh, what we we'll find here. Caretaker, new codex entry. Caretaker, what, what is that? Just like the waters, it seems like the water type of room. But there's a collection, collect cereals from the winter. Okay. Spice collection, so we need to collect spices from different races. Interesting. I guess I will get that through my game playthrough. What do we have here? Uh, read. To enter the library passage, three pairings must meet face to face. I library? What? Wait a bit. It says three faces need to meet each other, right? Oh wait, it disappeared. Really? Can I see a statue over there though? But it's just two statues. Where where is the third one? Okay, let's 
see. Well, this doesn't say anything about my current predicament. They need to face each other, right? Must be two more. Something happened. Something happened. I have zero idea what happened, but it did happen. <laughs> so we are looking for one more statue, I guess. Right? Where it is? Where is it? So it's not over there because I checked that when I was outside. Okay, we have one over here. Okay, is that so? Was see, it looks like him. Wait, there's another one over there too. What? You see it? Way over there. Is there like six statues or something? Yeah. I'm confused. I'm really confused. It said the three statues should face three faces or something like that. So why is there more? Than That's the second. One more to go. Okay, so yeah, there was three pairs of statues it seems, and my character seems to have. Like uh, commented on it. Wait, there's one more here. Oh wait, two more. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we'll do that. Okay, that did something. Yeah, it did something. I wonder what. Faded note, look at this place. We planned a rebellion here once. Said we would change the future of the elves, throw of tyrants, and we did. Now the path outside is fractured and will be hard, rekindling all the illusions. So was if so was if you see this, I'll be looking for you out of this world and in the mortal one. Don't cause too much trouble before I get there. Who is a reference? So was here though, I'm curious. I have zero idea who might be. Would it be that it was like his lover or something, or one of the other gods maybe? But no, it says that it was going to seek him for here the mortal world and in the fate they well this one. So it seems like he was someone who was under the command of Solas or something like that. Oh, it's glowing. Did I unlock that? Is that the library? Music room. So it's not the library, it's music room. Memories of duets. Memories of a duet. The sheet music left by this by this instrument appears to be for a duet. It has been an an Annotated by an expert hand. The annotations are com accom accompanied by clear emotional impressions. Diligent pra uh, practice with a ruthless eye to mistakes. Man, this piece, uh, it looks just like a bee as well. If you are like, uh, like me, half asleep. <laughs> okay, okay, uh, let's continue. We unlock the library. I guess, well, the music room. It says on the note that it was a library, but it's actually a music room. Ooh, that was a nice reward as a gold. 467. Wait. Do you hear that? There is something. There is definitely something on the other side. How do you open that wall? 
entrance. How do you do that? Okay, that is creepy. Like, really creepy. Is this like... Is this like... The current place, you know? What was it called? I keep forgetting the White House, yeah. Is that up there in the middle of... Well, the eye, if you call it that. The White House. And then... Uh, there's like a story here which I do not understand. Okay, so we have like an eye. What is that? Is that... Someone pray or something? I'm so confused. Oh wait, this is a wolf. A demon wolf or something like that. You can see like its hat and the horns and stuff. And its blue signature. It seems like someone was sacrificing someone to it. And it has like a crescent over his head. Is this like a moon type of creature or something? And then the White House was created, I guess. <laughs> I'm not sure. I really don't. I'm really not sure. Those eyes though, they look like a demonic type of eyes. That keep watching you over and over and over again. So let's complete our mission, because we're 20 minutes into the video and I'm just exploring basically the main room Wait, and stuff like that. that room wasn't there before, I don't think. Yeah, it wasn't here, exactly. Where does it lead though? It seems like it's blocked. Or oh, wait, did you mean that this wasn't here before? Oh well. Meditation chamber. Neville Harding must have put my pack here. It makes sense. Better place to sleep than the infirmary. Guess I can spare a few moments to unpack my things. Are we underwater? Look at that. We are literally underwater. Like, how is that possible? How is that even possible? Literally underwater. On life, the White House with Codex Century. This ancient workbook is filled with meticulous or veil fire unit stuff. It's encoded. Flicking through it offers vignettes of borrowed memory. Whoever wrote that was really good writer. <laughs> I have I have this feeling that the game has several writers and the one who was handling like war stuff and notes and the scrolls and scraps and stuff like that he was really good or she it doesn't matter. They were really good. Okay let's unpack. Barrick and his life lessons. <laughs> I asked him how we were supposed to stop Solus, and he gave me this. Take a long, hard look at it, kid. It'll always show the face of a hero who can get it done. Actually, this has quite the wisdom in it, to be honest. It's not delivered the correct way. I would have preferred to be, uh, to be delivered way more better and in depth and with emotion and uh, like to make you think about it but this was like more like you know the comedic type of uh, a relief comment to make you laugh more than anything else Canter identity options what examine options ready to canter identity choosing one will conclude the conversation what yeah, I'm confused. Why is this here? <laughs> I will go. Yeah, I will go. A good-looking hero, if I do say so. 
<laughs> it's comic relief, guys. I'm playing the game as a comic relief. Every time I look at this, I can hear that little girl thanking me for saving her village from Darkspawn. She said that since the Grey Wardens didn't have griffins anymore, I could have hers. If I hadn't been there, I'd never have met Varric. And never had to deal with the first warden complaining I ignored orders. By the way, in the first game in Dragon Age Origins, we had that decision uh, to make with the Grey Wardens as well, where we had to ignore uh, the first warden order, or we had to follow our gut. I remember that both of those options led to a different type of, uh, of outcomes. If you didn't follow the warden's orders, you was you were going to save the whatever was in danger. But if you did follow the Grey Wardens, you would have arrived and saved some, but most of them would have been dead or something like that. Was everyone was dead? And then the Grey Warden was criticized, the first Warden was criticized about his decision and if you make the opposite like choice and decide to uh, to ignore the first Warden order and save the place, it would be like uh, uh, they would uh, like... Uh, oh, what was the word? They would like raise it as a problematic decision that you didn't follow orders. Yeah, that it's uh, that you disobeyed uh, direct order, but then they will congratulate you on the decision because you saved more lives. And then the first order would come and say something like, uh, uh, "What was? What did it say?" I don't remember what he said, but he was angry with us. He was angry with us, but then uh, admit his mistake. And then it led to another choice. I don't remember what the choice was, but it held for a, a great uh, decision again that uh, had different outcomes. You could you could have like kicked out. Uh, you could have kicked him out from the order and replaced him uh, yourself, or was it uh, with Alistair? Or you could have pardoned him and uh, leave him like uh, uh, still give him the still uh, grant him the the helm of. Uh, you could have let him like keep his uh, position. Yeah, that is the word. That is the sentence. Uh, and I remember that I always chose Alistair to be the first warden, and that was represented in the next game. Uh, Dragon Age 2 or Dragon Age Position, I don't remember. Uh, that play that played a pivotal pivotal uh, a pivotal outcome, a pivotal decision that uh, that carried across all games. That is what I loved about Origins. Yeah. It was so well written, so well built and this has like it doesn't even help it doesn't even hold the candle to it. So this is why I could go back to that decision from Origins, but I bet it, is, it doesn't matter. I would never have met Varric and I had to deal with the first worker complaining I ignored orders. So you can admit that you were wrong, or that you made the right call. I suppose it was fair, the fact, uh, basically you agree with those uh, Two options that you were impulsive, but you made the right call, and you hold and you hold yourself responsible. Or you are like, uh, if you're like uh, a narcissist to some extension, <laughs> I cannot even call myself a narcissist. But if I made the right call for something, I would definitely. Yeah, it doesn't matter what the first warden thinks. Say that. There's a little girl alive today because I attacked instead of waiting for exactly. reinforcements. Exactly. We saved a life. And we shouldn't be ashamed of that choice. This is why, this is how I would have reacted in real world as well. No joking about it. This would be exactly the same reaction in the real world. The peddler world. gave me this after I saved his caravan from bandits. He told me nobles think of ruling like a game of chess, that each move determined what mark humanity will leave on the world. He told me 
in Opus 5 ruling like a game of chess that each move determined what mark humanity will live forward. The gods won't care, he loved traveling, so do I. There is a lot of war, we are too focused on war. I'm not sure what this option is and where did it came from. It's, it's weird how he's looking at me. <laughs> Well, it's true that the nobles uh, usually think of uh, commoners like uh, some kind of uh, of a chess pieces, and I don't agree with that, but it is the truth. But the gods don't care, usually. <laughs> oh, it's so true. So he whoever that is love traveling so do I he had fancy silks from all a statuettes from the wilds down south I could have listened to stories all night about places he'd been now I'm getting to see some of those places myself that is all about being an adventurer I love I love it like I really love it Okay, let's continue. The ever turning orb. My final training project as an apprentice. I spent months finding the precise balance of energy flows to make the enchantment permanent. Yeah, it was hard but worthwhile, or those were the days. I don't disagree. Uh, I, I disagree. I mean, I disagree with that. I don't care. <laughs> this is for those uh, uh, frat type uh, students, frat boy <laughs> type students. Uh, those are for the like uh, those who enjoy uh, by being the the type of uh, the opposite of the frat boys. And then we have. We don't we do not like our years in the college or whatever. And then we have like those were the days that I enjoyed. Well, it was a hard work, but it was worth a while. Maybe this guess. thing still works, seeing how many times I messed up the magic and broke something, and then I got there eventually. I oh, actually like that part. That's better. Now, how do I connect to Solus? Just sleep or relaxing? Meditate. Maybe if I clear my mind. Yeah, meditate. I just wanted to comment here that I did like that. Those small things like having your personal uh, things uh, placed around you by yourself, reminding yourself of who you were or who you want to be, that builds in depth the character and that is a master in, in mastering storytelling, or character build in this case. I absolutely loved this part, which was like giving us a chance to pick up who our character is. Yeah, really well done. That was fast. Back so soon. It must have been worse than I had thought. Hello, Dreadwolf. Ah, but perhaps I am mistaken. You may be here to correct me. To tell me that my concerns were unfounded. <laughs> Did I overstate the danger? The sarcasm. <laughs>
интересный Робин Этьен. So you're gonna be insufferable about it. See, this is the reason nobody likes you. I led a rebellion for centuries that culminated in the creation of the Vale and the destruction of the Elven Empire. Okay, this is among the reasons nobody likes you. My information was accurate. Now you realize that the danger is real. He's sarcastic. I love it. You are asking for knowledge no mortal in this world is privy to. If I am to share it with you, I need to know what makes you the right person to lead the fight against Alcanon and Gelanane. Well, this is when quite serious. So I like this option, not if I'm here. But I would have like like three more options from this side, which are opposite those. Like you know me, I can lead. I've proven that, you know, so far. So who are you to tell me that I'm not worthy of that knowledge, or for example, uh, not able to lead to a successful outcome of this situ situation, basically? It should be the next option should be I'm judge in a comedic way. <laughs> like the second option. I punch up, you should know. And there should be the sixth option, which is the opposite of I punch up. Like I have a tactical mind. You should know. <laughs> but let's go with this one. I stopped you, didn't I? You disrupted the ritual. Yeah, I did. Even though I'm nowhere near as powerful as you. Uh, how proud he is. <laughs> Your plans to tell me how powerful you aren't? Back in the Grey Wardens, I was with a group of recruits outside this village, dealing with the Darkspawn incursion. Our orders were to wait for reinforcements, but we knew that by the time they arrived, everyone in that village would be dead. So, you led your team of recruits in any way, collapsing the tunnel and saving the village. How do you know that? You helped Varric pursue me for the better part of a year. It would have been foolish not to learn about who was hunting me. Then you know that powerful opposition doesn't frighten me. I find a way to get the job done whatever it takes. I suppose I was not so different when I started. Started what? My rebellion against the Evanurus. The Elven Gods, as you call them. They wish to reclaim their dominion over this world. To accomplish that, they will need two things. First, the Blight. What exists in this world is a bare fragment of its power. The rest is imprisoned. Until they release it. The rest of the Blight is imprisoned? There's more than what's in the world already? Yes. Centuries ago, the Magisters of Devinter opened my prison. A tiny fract... You see that... The question, the way that he asked that question, it was so silly, so stupid. Couldn't you come up with something quite smarter, more suitable for the for the medieval fantasy? Power gap or something like that. Couldn't you like say something like, "Are you serious?" There is like something like this is like missing, like the the. the there is like this, uh, I don't know if it's like uh, because of the voice acting or something, but like the heavy, the heaviness, the fantasy type of, of dialogue is just so much missing here. So, yeah, I think that it could have done better, but then it did went well. It's, yes, centuries ago, the Magisters of the Winter opened my prison, a tiny fragment of the Blight escaped. This is important, this is like... How can you go from like a most stupid, silly type of way to ask the question to so well-written dialogue in the next like sentence? ...fragment of the Blight escaped. That fragment grew beneath the earth and led to the Blights that have swept across the world. However terrible the Blight is now, it is a mere fraction of what we will see if its full power is unleashed. This one's were the way Sawas had acquired was spot on. The way the question was asked was just terrible, laughable. It didn't escape 
The Blight didn't escape with the gods. Elganan and Gilanane escaped largely empty-handed, fortunately. Most of the Blight is still trapped in the prison I created ages ago. So what we saw at that village, that's them not at full strength? Correct. This was where we turned that wall. I wiped it. It wasn't as bad as the first one. I don't understand. Elganon and Gilanin were elves like you, right? Why would they want to blight the world? It is my fault. As the Dread Wolf, I was a thorn in their side. When my efforts weakened their grasp on the elven people, they grew frustrated, then desperate, and turned to the blight. Once the corruption took hold of them, they were blind to its horror. It was just another source of power for them. Now they would blight the world without hesitation, and call us backward and foolish for opposing them. Yeah, the thing that most of you like are asking yourself right now, what was wrong with that whole dialogue? And I will tell you what was wrong, it wasn't the dialogue, in this case it was the face expression of Luke. He was like wildly smiling, like everything is cool and everything is like, you know, cheer, cheer and flowers and whatever you want to call it, and asking such a heavy question. The face expression was just like missing big time here. How do we stop them? What would they need to do to free the Blight? And how do we stop them from doing it? They will need to pierce the veil to reach the Blight's prison. My Lyrium Dagger is one of the few artifacts capable of doing so. We've already recovered it from the ritual site. Excellent. Then they will have to make their own. That will give you time. You said the gods needed two things, and the Blight is the first. What's the second? Follow us. They have called themselves gods. And what is a god without worshippers to sing their praises? You think they want the elves back? I don't think the elven people will bend a knee to blighted murderous monsters. Agreed. Elganan and Gilanane care little for the elves. They will find worshippers among those hungry for power. Tyrants and bullies. The cruel and the corrupt who fear their own vulnerability and seize any chance to feel strong. If you hunt them, they will lead you to Algonan and Gilanane. Sounds just Honestly, You want me to pick fights with tyrants and bullies? Sounds fun. I gave no orders. All I offer are suggestions. I'm on it. What else? The Veravas, the lighthouse Saluvian, can take you anywhere. If you master its secrets. Have you done so? Not yet, but we've got one of the Veil Jumpers working on it. She'll get it sorted, and we'll see how it goes. Yes, I suppose we will. And when you speak with Varric, please tell him that I regret what happened. So, a few things here, like you could see throughout this whole cutscene, if I can call it like that, that most of the time uh, the main protagonist, Rook, was smiling and I think that is because um, Bioware has a technical bug, a technical issue because what it did make me realize while I was watching that is that my character looked like that most of the time. You see that? This is how I built it, my character. Him smiling, confident type of face. And in the cut skin, obviously it takes like the face that I built for him without actually um, taking the, the actor reaction in that particular situation. So in this case, I would say that uh, this was uh, this was something that Bioware missed during the, the face captures and uh, and the uh, conversation and the dialogues and that they should have done better. They should have done better. This shouldn't be happening during cutscenes. Cutscenes should be like something that catches the actor's face, not my face that I created for my character in the beginning. Well, his reaction in the beginning. It should be like when he's having that dialogue there should be like a full 
face capture of the main protagonist, the Rook Doctor, and how he delivers those lines. Because in the voice you can hear that he is serious, but the character is just smiling silly. <laughs> oh, I can't, I can't. How can you miss such a big, big thing? You shouldn't be missing such a big thing. Anyway, uh, let's continue. So, wardrobe. How do I get the wardrobe? It says that the wardrobe is like unlocked. Oh, wait, this is the wardrobe. Okay, my bad. A bit too knighty for me, but still okay looking. This seems like a rock type of gear. Interesting. This one is it's looking good. Paragon of leadership. A modern practical kit makes this the perfect armor for operatives trusted with command beyond the stars. <laughs> I love that well warning. Mm. Yeah, yeah. This is quite a bit of clipping, if you ask me. Rivers robes, named after the elven word for freedom. These heavy leather robes with golden accents are fit for a god or a mage whose power rivals one. So, this is like a Solas type of gear rope. Spectre of a battle's past, formal enough to face a war console while still functional on the battlefield. Mm, yeah, not my type. This this uh, is giving me like 17th, 18th century vibe for America and for Western Europe. Yeah. Nope. Just nope. Even a bigger knob. Too many things happening here. And those are just rocks. Those are just rocks. I think I like this one. This one looks good. But we will get the river up because we feel like gods. <laughs> I love the word god in this case. <laughs> We are mages that rival a god, so we should look like one. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, so we are using this one. The safe. Okay, so we do get. Spellblade of the Fallen Kingdom, Twisted Devil, Armor Down, Winter Coat. I think I like this one the most. Save. And okay, then we have Stuff of the Fallen Kingdom, Aquite Stuff. Aquite, sorry. That is the word. Yeah, I think this one is the coolest one. We actually chose a Fallen Kingdom for Spellblade and for a staff. So, uh, you cannot use the same casual wear as the armor sword wear. Okay, okay. 
okay that is important to know I don't know why they did that So Solus told the truth about the gods. You heard? It's bad, Varric. If you'd seen Demeter's crossing... The team needs to act fast. And it can't do that with me leading from a bed. You've got to take point on this. Okay, let's call the death one. I'll get it done. I never doubted it. Never mind. Rook, when I put this team together, what did I look for? A detective to find the Dreadwolf, and a scout to get us the lay of the land. Exactly the people he'd expect me to recruit. Disciplined. Predictable. And then there's you. Remember when we first met, kid? I watched you lead a few misfit recruits and push back one of the biggest darkspawn hordes I've ever seen. Just needed to find the right strategy. And no other warden found it. You stopped that horde. Had to drop a town hall on it, but you've got a knack, kid. For what? Finding a way through the wildest shit I've ever seen. With a plan that no one expects. On the best day of his life, Solus wouldn't see you coming, Rook. And don't worry. I'll still be here to talk if you need me. I really don't care for any of those, but let's hear them. There is something. When I took over at the ritual site, I had to make a call on who came with me to knock over that statue. It was the first decision I made leading this team, and Nev got hurt because of it. You made a decision with the best information you had. Sometimes you do that, and people end up hurt. Or worse. What would you have done? What would I have done? Probably gotten myself killed and failed to stop the ritual if you hadn't stepped in. <laughs> a good leader isn't someone who never makes mistakes. It's someone who admits when they make one. That's how you earn their trust. The funny thing here though, beside what he said, is that I didn't care who would come with me for the statue. Like, neither Hart nor Neef, like, really... really of my interest. I just picked Nev because I had to pick someone <laughs> from those two. Okay. About Solus. Did Nev sure. tell you about me talking to Solus in the Fade? I had some good arguments with Chuckles back in the day. I can't imagine being stuck with him in my head. But how are you feeling about it? Yeah, we need his help. It doesn't well, matter how I feel about it. We can't stop the gods without what he knows. And there you go. You don't have to love him to deal with him. He also <laughs> asked me to tell you so that true. he regrets what happened. Hurting you, I mean. Chuckles is sentimental. He could burn the world down and the thing that would make him cry is a single flower with blackened petals. I don't remember that thing about Zoas though. I don't think that was brought up in any of the, of the previous games. Demeter's Crossing was awful. While we were there, we found one survivor, the Mayor. You sent him to the Wardens, right? Not everyone was happy about my decision. We're just starting out and I'm already losing their trust. The key to earning the team's trust isn't to only make decisions everyone agrees with. It's showing the team that they can tell you whatever's on their mind, even if they think you're full of crap. And know you'll listen. Okay, I really don't I'll get, get some rest. The you're idea gonna be behind. fine, Rook. Uh, hey, one last thing before you go. I've been racking my brain thinking of contacts who might help us with these gods. You got any ideas? Nothing. 
But being a leader isn't about having all the answers yourself. It's about knowing who does. Nev has connections to a whole world that Harding and I barely know. Might be worth talking to her. Will do. Thanks, Varric. Anytime. Anyway, I wish I going? could be out there with you, Rook. Just be careful, all right? Anyway, <laughs> they don't stop talking quick. Seriously, guys, shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, anyway, so what I was going to say, I had zero idea why, why, why do they make us feel like we're the worst possible leader <laughs> in these games? Why? Why? I mean, we've done extremely well in Origins, in Dragon Age 2, and in Inquisition. So, what made them think that uh, questioning ourselves, like our character questioning himself in this case, is a good storytelling? I guess you could see that from the point of view if you were like in the first game, your beginning first time playing this franchise, this game, it would have made sense there, but here, in Dragon Age, in Dragon Age, I'm sorry, in Dragon Age, the Veilguard, I was going to say Inquisition, but yeah, it's the Veilguard, I don't get it. This is like the fourth game that came out uh, in, uh, within the Dragon Age uh, IP, and by now, we should be getting quite, quite, quite a capable leader to, you know, play. We're pretty much used to controlling armies and stuff like that, so yeah. <laughs> I just don't get it. Okay. So I'm going to end the video here. Uh, we spent a bit more here on like uh, let's say like a relaxing type of game playthrough. We didn't really get much to the story. But we did make quite a bit of progress, so yeah. Um, I will be ending it here. Other than that, like, subscribe, swipe if you don't like it, comment, 